Greetings, I'm G. Craig Lewis, and this is the exposition presented to you by EX Ministries. Uh, this is our episode 10, which is our final episode of this season, season two. Man. Went by pretty quick, didn't it? Yeah, um, yeah so today we're going to kind of do something different, but well, let me just give a special thanks to all of you that have been supportive of this that we've tried to do. We've just tried to bring truth to you, different things that can help you. From the responses, it seems that we are helping a lot of people uh, and the very things that helped us are, is now helping other people. So we're, we're thankful for that. Um, I have with me Jay Bryan uh, Johnson and also Carmina Barnett. And like I said, this is episode 10 and we're gonna close this season out with your questions about the nine episodes. Yeah. So the nine episodes we did, there's no way in the time frame, y'all saw that the, the episodes getting longer and longer <laughs> each one. So that's why it's time to stop. But <laughs> uh, there's no way to cover everyone's questions or cover every aspect of what it is that we're teaching. Uh, one thing that you, know, you have to realize is a lot of the things that I teach came from many, many years of ministry. I've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, about 30 years uh, in the ministry. And so, you know, a lot of things, you know, some things were progressive, some things were cumulative, just different things. So there's no way we can share everything or are able to share everything and expound completely on a, t on a subject without some questions remaining. Right. And so we wanted to address some of these questions that we received from you uh, about some of the episodes that we've had uh, before. Um, so... Well, let's get started. Come on, Carmina. Uh, first question. Well, you know, Pastor, we got a large number of questions, so we tried to whittle it down as mm -hmm. best we could. Right. So we're going to start here. This question is, uh, her question is, most female preachers use Deborah, the judge, as their ticket slash inspiration slash proof that they should be called as preachers to lead men, etc. Please explain. Can you clarify that? Can you help them understand? Is this correct or is this wrong? Well, I mean, the, the, the Bible is... <laughs> I almost got it. On? There's a gnat flying around here. It's the devil in the form of a gnat. <laughs> the, Bible, the Bible is uh, abundantly clear on this, Carmina. Come on back. <laughs> the Bible is abundantly clear on this. Paul taught that because a woman is subject to her emotions and the powers of the air, then she should always be under the covering of a man when she's praying or prophesying. Right. So she should never usurp a, a man's authority or teach men spiritual things. So first Corinthians 11, 10 says it like this. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Okay. So that that covering over her head is a father and or um, that would be her husband. Okay. Yeah. And this is not a complicated topic. Society has complicated it because of feminism. Right. So the feminist movement, if you look at the feminist movement, then, yeah, it's going to be hard to translate that movement into what the word is saying, right. because it's going to fly straight up against the word because it's the world and the world does things to destroy the world. Mm -hmm. And God does things to preserve the world that he made. Right. So it, they're not going to relate at all. Um, and I have a whole video about this. And that's what I was going to ask you. You have a bit. Tell people about that video. Yeah. Well, I have Jezebel's Finest Hour, yes. right. of course. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's a video that every woman should see. And then I also have uh, Era Man 3, 
uh, the emasculation proclamations um, where I go into detail about Deborah and Barak. Deborah was not called of God to judge Israel. OK, people think that, but uh, the Bible is specific in the book of Judges. It tells you the ones that God called. Right. It said the spirit of the Lord came up on this one or that one or this one, you know, Samson or whoever it was that judged the spirit of the Lord came up on them. Mm -hmm. But when it gets to Deborah, it just says she was judging Israel at the time. Right. So it lets us know that this was her choice and what she wanted. So she wasn't called to judge Israel ever. Uh, she acted out of compulsion because Barak was a weak man. Right. Mm -hmm. She even repeated God's orders to him, but he refused to lead without her going with him to battle. So that's right. how sorry he really was. <laughs> this story was not an illustration of what women should do, but it was a show. It was to show exactly what happens when a woman takes it upon herself to rule over men uh, or rule, period, right. uh, in the kingdom. Judges four and four states and Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lipidoth. She judged Israel at the time. Okay. Now, this next question, and I've seen situations like this. Uh, this young lady said that you mentioned confessing sins in front of the church. When well, we talked about that, oh, yeah. a lot of churches believe that if a woman gets pregnant out of wedlock and she is on the praise team, is she supposed to apologize to the church publicly before she can get back on the praise this team? This sounds real personal. <laughs> right, like real, real personal. Hey, this um, is the question. <laughs> so let's let's clarify first that her sin is no greater than any of the sins that are being publicly announced. So it doesn't right? matter if she's on the praise team or not. However, okay, okay, right, okay. her condition will publicly announce it without her verbal word, because we'll clearly see that she's pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But there's nothing wrong with humbly removing yourself from the praise team. Okay. So you know, I, I'm sure at some point that's why you're submitted to a pastor. A conversation can be had. And then a decision can be, be caused, but the idea that you would just go and just chastise somebody for falling, and when the Bible clearly states that we've all fallen short, right? And the Bible clearly states that if a man say that he's without sin, that he's the liar, right? Mm -hmm. So we just, let's, let's just keep to James 4 and 6. It says, but he gives more grace to, well, he gives more grace, wherefore he said, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So if you're truly like carrying the light of Christ and you've fallen in something, then you would have a conversation to say, hey, I don't want to be a stumbling block for my brother or my sister in the Lord. Maybe I should be removed or I'm asking if I can be removed. And even in that, you're submitted. You're asking if you can be removed because of the situation. Yeah, it doesn't require you getting up and publicly apologizing right. to the church. Right. You know, because like, like I tell you all the time, then it's like, right, turn it, it, yeah. let's pass the microphone. <laughs> because that means everyone should do it. Public, right, right. public confession of sin is not what confess your faults one to another means. Mm. Doesn't mean you go through the crowd telling everybody what you did. Right. There is no biblical account of a person confessing their sins publicly before the whole church. Mm. There is even evidence that things were handled privately unless a person refuses to repent. Right. Uh, Galatians 6 and 1, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of what? Meekness. Meekness. Right. Considering thyself, lest thou also be, be tempted. tempted. And then another mm -hmm. scripture says, if you go to them, they don't hear you. You know, then that's when you have to decide how you're going to handle it as far as bringing it before the whole church. But right. if the person is repentant, then, you know, private, privately handling it would be, will always be better. Right. Now, when we were pulling these questions, we some of the questions are really personal. So we didn't want to put names out there. So we're just kind of sharing the question and you know who you are. Yeah. Uh, this next question <laughs> is a situation like that. We talked about tithes and offerings. So we did an episode on that. And this this question comes from a young woman who says when talking about the tithes and offering of a woman whose husband is not giving, does that mean nothing? She says that I'm praying for my husband's spiritual growth. I even put his name first on the envelope. I just don't know how to address certain things while staying in my place. But again, back to her original question, does my giving mean nothing since he did not lead it? Well, let's just be clear. We, we, were, we, were, we were not saying that the woman's giving means nothing. Right. Right. Okay. right. What we were stating was the order of the home yeah. designed by God. And also that the husband needs to give permission and his blessing if the family is giving. Mm -hmm. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So when it comes to the money, you know, the man should be the provider of the home. This is First Timothy 5 and 8 says, but if any provide not for his own and specifically for those of his own house, he have denied the faith 
and he's worse than an infidel. So giving is giving, and especially if it's from the heart. But there's still order that has to be applied to that. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be blessed. Yeah, and that's yeah. all we were trying to discuss was right. the order. Yeah. And, you know, I tell you all the time, this is why you must be careful who you marry right. and make sure the person you marry is capable of spiritually leading. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, that's the whole issue even with Jezebel. And, you know, we... I, me and they email me all the time, man, my wife got Jezebel in us. And I said, well, the only way she can have Jezebel is if you are Ahab. Ahab. Yeah. And that's the thing. Ahab in a man is going to create Jezebel. Right. Women that are Jezzy and they're married, they didn't just start out that way or they didn't just bring that with them. Even if they brought it with them, it shouldn't work and keep working. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, I'm still in Jersey mode. I'm shifting to the fourth gear now. Right. I mean, a man ought to be able to get a hold of that and straighten that situation out if he is leading his home properly. So 1 Kings 21 and 25 gives us that uh, Ahab, uh, it, it basically says that there was no man whacker in the Bible than Ahab who did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, who Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Now, this... Jezebel and Ahab's situation really bothers God for them to highlight him in the word as like the worst dude in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. There's other dudes that kill folks, this folk, <laughs> yeah. that. I mean, you know, just all <laughs> kinds of stuff, but they highlight Ahab. There's nobody worse than Ahab. Wow. Because he couldn't get his wife together. Right. And the Bible says she was able to stir him up instead of God or the spirit of the Lord stirring him up. His wife was the one doing it. So yeah. we got to be careful of that. And that way the order of the home stays the way it needs to be, and you can be blessed. Right. That's the first step in being blessed as a home is, is, is God's order. God's order. Amen. Now, this next question, I really want y'all to follow me, okay? I'm going to go slow. <laughs> the question is, if there's a church that's constantly on your mind or something just telling you that that's where you need to be, is that God? And if so, how do you transition your family there if your spouse is against it? And they use your kids against you to stop the transformation to the church you believe you need to be at. Ooh, that's a lot. Take a minute. Take it in. I think we need to go back to the Ahab thing. <laughs> <But> go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, okay. So, so first, okay. before you even consider the church part of it, the main focus is getting your wife on the same, the same page with you. Right. That, that's that's first. That's, that's all. That's, it. That's, that should be get you and you and the lady on the same page first, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you know why are you and your spouse divided? What what is causing a division? So the church is on that list mm -hmm. and it's important, but your wife on the same page with you. Why are you divided in the first place? Mm -hmm. And then. Figuring out what's causing that division should be probably before you find the church, mm -hmm. because then it's easier to lead her to the church that you've chosen for your family to go to, that you've decided you want to submit to the authority of because you're the man and you're the head of the house. Supposedly. Right. Supposedly. Right. <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 31 says, for this cause shall a man leave his, his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and the two become one flesh. So you got to make that, you know, that two to one. Before you find the church. Yeah, yeah. Like my eyes work together, my hands work together, <laughs> yeah. my one flesh work together. Yeah. I mean, if I want to go right, my one foot don't turn and try to force his right. way the other way. We mm -hmm. going that way. Yeah. So that's that's what one flesh symbolizes. Uh, I mean, what it's supposed to symbolize. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we supposed to be going in the same direction. So my question is, why doesn't she want to be your help me? Uh oh. Like, what is she then? <laughs> like, what you got? I mean, <laughs> what you doing? Like, why? Why? Oh, right. I mean, what, what are y'all doing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. If she's created to be your help meet, but don't want to meet your help, what, what is it? Mm -hmm. And why, why doesn't she want to support your direction for the home? So mm -hmm. she must either believe you a lousy le leader mm -hmm. or you just whack and she can just bully you and get her way. Right. Yeah. Either way, you need prayer, bro. Pray hands emoji. You can't lead your family to a church if you can't lead your family. Amen. But before you go any further, though. Wait, I, I need to read that again. Now, please read that again. You can't lead your family <laughs> mm -hmm. to a church if you can't, can't lead, lead your family. 
So that's where I was going to ask. So the part about using the children to stop the transition. That's part of the question. But why would why would your woman help me want to use? Why does she even need to use something against you? Right. Like this not a help meet. Yeah. Like you're not helping me. Yeah. Like what, what did you do? What, what? You're not meeting yeah. my help. So. But I tell you what it is. It's just a whole lot of bad advice and following the wrong stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, just just not out of just out of place and out of order. Genesis five and two says male and female created them, blessed them and called their name Adam. Right. It didn't say Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Call the name Adam. Mm -hmm. The reason she took your last name was to take your identity. Mm -hmm. So if she doesn't have your identity and don't want to follow you or be your help meet or whatever, bro, don't come to this church with it. You need to try to work that out and figure out why, how y'all can get on the same page. You really would mess a church up. You only go to no church. You need to first get mm -hmm. church in your home. Amen. Can you be the priest of your home first before you go try to get under a pastor? Yeah. So the next question, we go back again to the tithes and offering episode. And this person asks, what should you do with your tithes while you're waiting to find a church? That's a good question. Very good question. Um, give to the ministry that's feeding you in your um, interim period. Mm -hmm. Did I get it? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. All right. We're <laughs> practicing on the pronunciation of the word in the back. Interim. All right. So, no, but really, you, you should give to the ministry that's, that's feeding you. While you're in that space trying to figure out where to lead your family men, you know, or young lady, the single women, mm -hmm. find, find, find a... Well, if, if you're being fed, for instance, um, well, it kind of, kind of, it would come off like we're trying to ask for money. But I'm, I mean, if you're being fed. I'll take it. Okay, cool. <laughs> if you're being fed by something and it's, and it's truly nurturing to your, to your soul and, and it's a balanced word, both for spirit and, and for your natural life, then that's where you would want to sow a good seed into. So yeah. until you find that place of worship, sow into that place that's helping you and helping you or your family. So 1 mm -hmm. Timothy 5 and 18 says, for the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that tread uh, out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. So wherever, again, wherever you're getting that um, that nurturing from spiritually is where you, you can sow to. Yeah, and sometimes the interim period lasts longer than we would like it to, and that's <laughs> the thing. And I wanna I wanna say that I put something on Instagram a couple of days ago, but I really want to say that because a lot of people got discouraged because they've been looking and searching and looking. Yeah. Right. First thing you have to realize is we're in the end times. And the Bible says that this <laughs> drought that's happening where men shall become lovers of themselves. It said that this would be perilous times, not the world. We're not talking about the world men becoming lovers of themselves. Mm -hmm. In the world, they've always been lovers, lovers of themselves. themselves. Right. It's right. talking about the church. Men's hearts will turn. Yeah. Lovers of themselves, high minded, proud, boasters, you know, lovers of those uh, things that aren't good. You know, all those things, blasphemers, mm -hmm. it lists all of those things, having a form of godliness, but denying the power. So that is telling you that it's the church that is speaking of. And he said, uh, Paul was telling Timothy that these things would happen in the last time and yeah. uh, perilous time. So prepare for them. So we're in those times now. That's why it's hard to find a fellowship where somebody's not about the money or the homosexual or promoting the world, or doing something worldly, doing something you know, promoting lasciviousness or whatever it is. Right. It's hard to find churches that aren't either doing that or a part of an organization that mm -hmm. does that. It's just hard to find. So we know that a lot of you out there are going to be in interim periods where you're trying to find that, you know, specific ministry, you right. know, right. and, you know, we're here in Texas and, you know, we, we love our church. Love it. But, you know, it's in Texas. So you may <laughs> not be in Texas. So right. all those things. So you're looking for somewhere to go where you are or whatever. Um, just some advice, what I did during my interim period, mm -hmm. I, I went through an interim period. Uh, I had the Bible study in my home with my family for a few years. I'd sit them around the table, all mm -hmm. the lessons I prepare now, my kids remember, I, I did those, did lessons like that, would print them out, had the PDF, all of the stuff that I do now. I was doing this at home with my family, uh, until we found somewhere to go. I needed, the, and I needed that period to detox mm -hmm. from, tra uh, traditions, and a system of denominations and pagan practices that are within the church. Right. So I went through that period where I had to get those things out of me because I was so conditioned by denominational norms and pagan practices that are in the church and tradition that I had to divorce myself from that during that period. So God took me through a period 
uh, where I could get rid of those things because he knew, I didn't know, but mm -hmm. he knew I'd be starting ABC where those things couldn't be a part of it. Right. So I used that period to seek God, strengthen my family, and prepare for the church home that God had for me, which is now Admin Believers Council. So nothing wrong with an interim period, but during that period, we had to give to ministries or ministers that blessed us, a, a ministry that blessed us or whatever, yeah. uh, until we could, you know, uh, get, get a place of our own. And I'm glad you opened up and were transparent about that, taking that detox time, because somebody's thinking, you know, well, I can't find a church and they're really feeling away. And that you, like you said, that could be a time that God is using you to kind of get some of those. But yeah, yeah. Happen. I mean, you could say, I want to come to ABC. I want to come to ABC. But you still got bucking and shouting in you. Right. And we don't buck and shout here. No, right. we do not. Like nobody gets hurt. You know, we don't we, mm. we don't do that. We if don't. I can hold shot. it. Everybody can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we. you know, you can you can. Dad, I mean, we, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, I don't even want to say that. We just don't do a whole bunch of emotional stuff here. Right, right. And that's just the way we are as right. far as our church's personality, right. which every church has. Right. And so if that's in you and then you sending me letters, uh, Pastor, when you going to let us loose? Let us loose. What? Oh, I've gotten those emails. <laughs> let us loose. Wow. Yeah, when you going to let us loose and let us buck? When we going when, when we going to do the, the the praise break? And I said, "Brother, we don't we don't have those here." You know, and some people may be offended. When am I going to start be able to start the mime and the puppet ministry? Mm. We don't have the mime ministry. We don't mm. believe in miming, you know. So you, you might need to get a few things out of you before you start thinking about making a trip, yeah. you know, out this way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So our next question, and we talked about women in ministry. I can't remember which episode that was. So this one relates to that. I said puppet ministry. There ain't nothing wrong with a puppet ministry, I guess. Yeah, I mean. They could be. Have we had that? No. There are puppets no, for we, Jesus. We don't I've do, seen it. We don't do puppets, yeah. though. We don't do puppets. Just not here. But okay. I've seen it. Okay. The next question. Could you explain <laughs> how a woman should operate in spiritual gifts without violating the scriptures concerning gender, gender roles? Well, um, women according to the word, it, it's really, 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 really simple. It is. Uh, Women. So according to the word, women should never teach or preach to men in the congregation, nor should they ever pastor or lead men. Spiritual. This is all a spiritual thing. This is wrong according to the scriptures. It, First Timothy 2 and 12, because it, it seems like it, it always comes up. Somebody want to get up in that pulpit, Pastor, <laughs> and they trying to see if you're going to ever sway. First Timothy 2 and 12 <laughs> says, but, if, uh, but, uh, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to assert authority over the man, but to be in silence. And don't be offended by that. That's a responsibility that a lot of people don't understand what comes along with it. You understand what I'm saying? So for, for the woman, you're, taking care of a child is, is a very big responsibility. You can teach them all day. Giving birth to one. Right. You got a whole lot of special stuff you can do. All right. Why you got to be, why you need the mic? All right, all right, exactly. So no, no, no spiritual authority. Um, the Bible is clear on that. Women should not do that. No type of authority over a man spiritually. No. Uh, and Galatians, let me read it first before I get into it. Ugh. Galatians 3 and 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. This is the scripture they try to use to debunk the... The person that wrote it is Paul, and you're trying to debunk what Paul said by what Paul, Paul said. said. <laughs> I just. <laughs> uh, he just took a drink. But they, I needed a drink. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's going to cut that little clip out. I just yeah, said. I know. No, no, no. <laughs> but <laughs> people like to say that there is no male or female in Christ, but then they want to be married and have a family. <laughs> that takes male and female. That takes. Uh, yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Ridiculous. There is no difference made in us when it comes to salvation, is what this passage is saying. Right. But there's definitely a difference in us when it comes to gender rules. Yeah. Paul taught specifics on how a family and the church should be set up. How can you disregard his writings but support his writings when it comes to pastoring? Right. He called the pastors. He put them in churches. He described the gifts. Oh, he explained the church order. Yeah. He did all of that. <laughs> but you are going to discount the part about women preaching to men? 
Yeah. <sighs> God forbid. <laughs> oh, that makes me tired. I'm tired right now. I need a nap. Go ahead. Well, we got a few more. Hang in there. Hang in there. <laughs> now, we got a lot of questions, Pastor, about you being a comedian. We did include those, but we did get a lot. Just wanted to put that out there for the record. But this one in particular goes to Jay Bryan. Now, since you are a national recording artist, I'm reading what it says. Oh, you've been elevated. National. national. You've been elevated. Do you use oh. your talent specifically for the church or to reach people outside of the church? What would you advise to young artists today who desire to use their gifts? I, 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 I keep it simple. Okay. You, I use my talents for encouragement. Mm -hmm. And enjoyment. That's it. Okay. Even before we decided to even release music for the first project, Pastor used to always make mention of it. We were just all right riding around with it, and like two or three of us had it. <laughs> like it, it, it's really not that big of a deal. But but my gifts and my callings, to be specific, right? Mm -hmm. I used to edify the body of Christ. Wait, you saying it's a difference? There's definitely. Uh -oh. That's a whole show. That's definitely a, whole a difference. Show. Season three. That's a whole so show. there's a difference between me doing music and then me doing ministry. Gotcha. A lot of people feel called to music, and we don't have evidence of that in the Bible. Nobody's called to do music. Somebody that's completely, completely far away from even the idea of doing music can be taught if they want to apply themselves diligently. But if you're called to do something, this has to be 100% ordained, ordained by God. He has to pro provide whatever it is that, that's needed for that specific calling, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so I have, and then, here's, I, and I, I put this on Instagram too, a, like a couple of months ago. For no particular reason, I just, I just did it. I'm fully submitted with my, with my gifts and callings and with my ability to do music. So being submitted to an authority, that, that allows help for me to grow and mature as I walk through this thing because me as a man, as a husband, as a human being first comes before any of that. Mm -hmm. So he helping me, you know, properly balance those things out, I, I need a pastor specifically. Mm -hmm. Like, right? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So th that idea that I, I always get weary about that. I, I know a lot of a lot of people, guys and, and women, singers, rappers, musicians, whatever, their churches don't give them any support. I couldn't do my music if ABC didn't have my back. I wouldn't want to do my music if ABC didn't have my back. So the, that's the main thing. Having having the the proper structure for you to do it, the, the, the music should come from the church. Yeah, and all, and we got the one thing we have to remember is the only instance of a musician rising up and using his talents to be exalted and lifted up is Lucifer. So I tell folks, find yourself in the Bible. Yep. Well, if you're trying to be famous, you're trying to be the bomb, you're trying to blow up. The only example you have is Lucifer, Isaiah 14 and 11. The devil did this first, and it got him kicked out of heaven. Right. He did. Well, our next question, and I'm going to read it as it is presented to me. Single pastors, though, are they automatically disqualified, or is it possible to learn anything from no, them? Talk about it. Sure, but I definitely got a problem with a single pastor. All right. See, he done one fourth in a rhyme now. <laughs> I see. <laughs> it was that whole national uh, artist thing. I national artist that just went to his head. Now he's national. He's that's elevated. Like, that's one of your Scratch favorite songs, though. It's preaching ain't there. <laughs> I love uh, the qualifications of being a pastor state that he should be the husband of one wife. It does not say he can be single or a husband. So that's, that's, that's important to pay attention to. It doesn't give this option in the Bible. So to add this option would be adding to the text or assuming that because it was not stated that it's just okay, right? But the text is specific, assuming that if you desire to be an elder, you are a husband already. You, you can't do that. It's, so First Timothy is where we will find this at. First Timothy 3 and 2, it says a bishop, which translates to pastor, um, also elder, then must be blameless. Ah, the husband of one, one wife, wife. Mm -hmm. vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, and then apt to teach. So, yeah. There's the answer. Uh, one wife. <laughs> Husband of one wife. I mean, it's most people read wife. that and say, well, it's saying that so you won't have one. more than one wife. <laughs> when, when, but, but when this was written, nobody had more than one wife. So uh, they try to use that uh, like it means that you can't. Then they try to say, well, it means you can't be divorced and remarried and all that. Oh that doesn't goodness. translate properly either. Uh, this must mean what it says. Right. I'm going to go with what it says, uh, because Amen. how can you pastor families without having one? Yeah. I mean, that's the biggest question. How can you counsel men on marriage? Talk about it. 
I mean, which is the cornerstone of Christianity without being married. Most importantly, why are you not married? Yeah, I, why, like, you like, don't want to. Why are you not married? <laughs> oh, well, I got the Paul singleness uh, call nah, on me. Well, why you got girls phone numbers in your phone? Talk about why it. Why you going on dates? Talk about why it. Why you watching movies with R-rated movies with nudity and boobies and junk in it? Talk Bruh, about you it. ain't no eunuch. Well, and I mean, Paul was not a pastor, so don't use Paul. Right. Well, Paul didn't. Paul wasn't a pastor. Did I say that? You didn't. Mm -hmm. And he was a eunuch. Are you a eunuch? Mm -hmm. Paul had no sexual desires. Mm -hmm. He was a missionary mm -hmm. and did not preside over women at all. He didn't have no women under him. He was mm -hmm. a missionary. Right. A pastor must lead by example so if i have a family i'm going to a church with the example of it right right amen all right so our next question is talking about choosing the right church which was an episode we did the question is does god assign us to churches or can we just pick how much freedom do we have in selecting the church we attend that's a good one Really good. What, what ch church is your preference? Yes. Ooh, it's Nat. Yeah. I, I mean, I it, it. it's a drone. It's a yeah. Jezebel drone. I was trying to kill it right here. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> but uh, church, is your, church is your preference. Um, what flavor of church, you know, you want uh, is, you know, that's what you should, should seek. But it should definitely be what you and your family need overall. Mm -hmm. um, what I needed was here in Texas. So I made the move, Pastor. You know, I um, and and I and had you didn't rap for seven years. I, I, a very long time. You even did a bootleg little record, and, and I just yeah. didn't even recognize it. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is absolutely the truth. <laughs> um, but yeah, but what I needed was here in Texas, so I made the move, and now I have exactly what I need. My family, we have the fellowship we need. Um, so it, it just took that. It, it took you know finding what I needed, and I did it. Yeah. And folks want to pray and they want God to give them the name. Yeah. What is it? Willie. 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 Pastor Willie. Pastor Willie. <laughs> Where's the phone book? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, but God is not going to give you the name of the pastor and the location Amen. of the church. Your car ain't going to Spin off the freeway and land in a parking lot, and yeah. you see a sign. This must be. Yeah, it. I mean, I, I knew you before you were pastor. I had no idea you was going to pastor. Right, right. So it it, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, the teaching and the fellowship will speak to you. That mm -hmm. that's that's the thing. The teaching, the fellowship, how the church is structured. Yeah. Is it going to work for what you need for your family? Is it going to get you from A to B to C where you need to be spiritually? Growth, change your generation, help you. All those things. That's what's important. Right. You'll know because it will register with what you need and how you desire to feed yourself and your family spiritually. Because uh, Acts 2 and 44 tells us that when they were all gathered together in the first New Testament church, they all believed. The Bible said they, they all that believed were together and had all things in okay. common. So that's what you're looking for. You're right. looking to have things in common so you can be among like minded believers. Amen. Now, this question went back to season one. Episode 10. Is that allowed? Mm -hmm. But it's a great question, though, and I really want you guys to talk about it. How do you leave your current church respectfully and peacefully? Do you write a letter? Do you talk to the pastor? What do you do? Um, I, got, I have a little bit of experience in this. Okay. Um, so, so, well, let me say this. When I, when, I, when I left my previous church, I informed the pastor because I was in leadership. So, you know, he, and just to be clear, he was cool with it. Um, he was a personal friend. Uh, he is a personal friend of Pastor G. Yep. Good friend. So no harm, no foul right. at all. And then I, I kept everything good because I was leaving for a specific reason. So it, it's not that the church I left was messed up or anything like that, but there was a specific thing that I desired that was here at ABC. And so I'm, I just made the decision to do it. Mm -hmm. So... When I left, I left on peaceable terms. It was peaceably, right? And that's what the Bible tells us to do. Hebrews uh, four, 12 and 14, follow peace with all men and holiness, uh, without which no man shall see the Lord. So that, it was just as simple as that. You just, you leave peaceably. If, if, it's, 
If you're not in leadership, you, there's no reason to announce that. Mm -hmm. You just stop going. People reach out to you, where are you going, man? I made a decision to move on to something else and leave it at that. If you're in leadership, I didn't know at the time. It was my first time being in leadership at a church and having the desire to leave for the reasons that I had. Mm -hmm. I got counsel from somebody wise mm -hmm. who told me not to do it the way I was planning to do it. Because I was planning to just, all right, y'all, I'm out, or, <laughs> or this is this, or this is that. No, you sit there, you write it out, you have a, you have a conversation. Once you have that conversation, then you go. And because of that, the, the pastor at the time called us up at the end of a service and said, hey, Jay and his family is moving down to Texas. He's going to be in good fellowship. We all know him. At the time, it was Minister G. Craig Lewis. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure we, we wish him Godspeed, pray for him. And then that was that. Never had an issue since. Y'all still friends. And we still, to, to, to this day. Yeah. He, he just called me a couple weeks ago, actually. Okay. So, yeah, it's, it's just, a, just do it respectfully and peacefully. But see, that's you, Jay Brian, and you say that you <laughs> love the Lord. <laughs> but in this day and time that we live in, and I've seen this, Pastor, we get on the Facebook mm. and we get them told. Mm. Y'all ain't saved over there. I don't like none of y'all. I ain't never coming back. Mm. We, can't, we can't do it like that. I mean, but it's <laughs> an open platform. So I'm expressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People that do those kind of things. And we talked about it, I guess, a couple of episodes ago about seditions, discord. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay dearly for that. That's going to cost you. Yeah. Because there are people that are hurt, innocent bystanders, like I always say, dead bodies all around you. You're going to pay for that. Some of those right. people will disconnect from God and never reconnect because of you, because of what you said, because of, you know, uh, out of selfishness, out of hatred, whatever the case. And uh, I've, in, in my experience, I've learned it, it's really a demon. Uh, I dreamed about this demon, which is a snake. I dreamed about a snake and I dreamed pieces of the snake, even after the head of the snake left, pieces of it. Were, were still in the church. Yeah, you gave the testimony. Remember I gave the yeah. testimony and then I called my friend James. Shout out James Logan. My, that's my man. But he, he actually told me, he said, every piece of the snake has to go. Yeah. And um, so, you know, that, that whole snake thing is real. And it, it'll, it'll hurt a church. But most importantly, it'll hurt people, uh, little ones and innocent bystanders. So you don't want to get online and do that out of anger because you can't take it back. Folks can download it, screenshot it, whatever right. the case. Yeah. And now you're stuck with a dead, a, a bloody bag, body bag in front of you. People that may not ever come back to the faith. Yep. And uh, you're going to have to pay for that. So you have to be careful. And all of this we're talking about really depends on your relationship with the church and the leadership. Yep. So because you had a relationship with leadership, mm -hmm. you, you, you needed to do it a certain way. Um, if you're on your post or whatever and you're just not showing up anymore, that would that would not be the right way to handle that. Right. Uh, but, you know, if you just want to move on or whatever, it's it. You know, you just move on uh, if you're not in leadership. They may require some churches may require you to leave a certain way in order to be in good standing or just have a record of it or, you know, to take you off of the text message list or whatever it is. So you just let the Lord lead you on that. Right. Uh, but, you know, I. I Tell people all the time, don't be afraid if, you, you know, if you're confronted with it to talk to the leadership, if they confront you about it, don't be scared, you know, because yeah. a lot of times leadership will scare you and make you think, oh, you leaving? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I'm moving on. You're moving on. Oh, <laughs> you know, just get all deep. <laughs> <laughs> like the church, you know, that's the only church. Yeah. Church is just flavor, man. You yeah. can pick up a rock, go outside and throw. We could hit four churches right here where we are. Yes. Churches are everywhere. So you can't act like your church is the only church right. where a person can be. So, you know, don't be afraid. Sometimes it's good to go ahead and let people know. Right. But don't bad mouth it because it may be for somebody. Else. Never right. bad mouth right. it because you may have outgrown it, but somebody else may need that. Amen. So, Exactly. So our next question, we did an episode about divorce and remarriage. And we talked about that extensively. Well, this question comes to oh, us. Oh, we need to take a break. Let's I, take a break. Yeah, I didn't put a break in here <laughs> when I was planning the script. Go ahead. So let's do this. We're going to take a small break and then we're going to come back and answer more of your questions, which we really appreciate you sharing your questions with us. So stay tuned. We've got more of the exposition. <laughs> A true 
Church Perspective with Pastor G. Craig Lewis. We're back and we've got more questions that have been sent to us from viewers and listeners and we appreciate it. This next question goes back to the episode about divorce and remarriage. The question is, what about cheating? What about STDs? Wow. Can you bounce if your health is jeopardized by a reckless spouse? <laughs> bounce? That's bounce. the official question. Bounce, mm -hmm. like as in divorce, bounce. Bounce, be out, wow. out there. Mm -hmm. So. Here's my question. Do any of us have the right to judge the person we are in love with or have become one with? We have to pray and not not the MC Hammer way, not just to make it today. Right. You got a, the, the effectual fervent prayer. Like, I, I don't think Christians. <laughs> Well, they don't, they don't believe in don't, the power of prayer anymore I, they because don't. they're praying for cars and houses and material things. Okay. And when they don't get those things, they yeah. shout the prayer. Exactly. But we have to pray uh, for, for God to keep us safe um, and got to pray for, for God to heal you, if, if that's the case. So there, there's still no biblical grounds for divorce according to scripture. Forgiveness is forgiveness, no matter the circumstance. Any and everything can be worked out. In Jesus, he died. Like, you can't reverse the death. He just beat it because he's the son of God. Right. But when it comes to your husband or it comes to your wife, you can't forgive? Because I think people miss the, the time frame. It's going to take time. Things hurt you. Things change. Like, you, Pastor talks about all the time, it'll change the course of certain things, mm -hmm. right? You could have been heading down one particular path, and because of, of uh, a transgression, then you go down another path, then it's just gonna take a little time to get that thing back balanced, but you gotta be patient and prayerful about it. So no, you can't divorce for those reasons. And sickness and in health. I mean, to why did you say that? Do us part. Sickness and in health. I mean, uh, STD is sickness. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I love here, you know, I've married like 30 couples uh, since I've been pastoring, and I get to do premarital counseling. And I think that's what's missing a lot of time. You know, people are, are relying on Tyler Perry movies and BET <laughs> on, on what to do in their marriage. Yeah. And they need premarital counseling so that they can understand, look, this is for real. Yeah. So if you, you know, looking at him side eyed while you're courting, then it's going to be double side eyed when you get married. And these are things that need to be known in premarital counseling right. uh, before you make these decisions. However, if you've already made the decision, you took a vow and you said for better or for worse till death do you part. Yeah. So you need to try to work that out. Amen. So we're going to stay there on that episode. And the next question applies it as well. It says, so interesting, you didn't touch on physical abuse or violence in a marriage. It goes on to say, I guess common sense would have to kick in at that point. If an individual is physically or verbally abusing you and your children... <laughs> You should leave. This yes. is a statement. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Can mm -hmm. we display the 911? Can we, can we put 911? <laughs> Landon, can we put 911 on the screen when we do this? Look. Physical abuse requires 911. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Call the cops. All right. Call the cops. You got to get the safety and you got to separate yourself immediately and then let the law of your land prevail. Yeah. Like, this doesn't take counseling. Yeah. If somebody's trying to physically harm you, yeah. yes, please call 911. But if, but if you divorce them in this particular case, right, you must remain unmarried according to the Bible. Okay. So we're clear on this. I mean, in, in light of it, it, it it's, it's not a lighthearted topic if we're talking about any form of abuse. Mm -hmm. But if you divorce them, you got to remain unmarried according to the Bible. The Bible states that when a woman divorces a man, she must remain unmarried no matter what the reason for the divorce is. 1 Corinthians 7 and 11 but, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife. So that, that little time frame there where reconciliation and forgiveness and patience and prayer, 
God can change somebody, right? Yeah, you're getting into what I'm going to say. Oh. Uh -oh. I've... <laughs> <laughs> He always does that. I've seen God change it's, it's men's hearts and save them from abuse when they were exposed to teachings that helped them become men. So don't give up on it. You yeah. separate yourself. Separation is talked about by Paul uh, for a time. Mm -hmm. Get away from it. Get to safety. But while you're continuing to, to pray, know that God can change this man's heart. Amen. Or this woman's heart. Some women just pile driving dudes now. Yeah. When men are raised by overbearing women or abusive fathers, they are more apt to be abusive. But the washing and regeneration of the word and the sharpening of strong men can change their hearts. We have men here at our church that were once out there like that, but now they are loving providers, protectors, and priests of their homes. Why? Because they plugged into a fellowship where these things are addressed and dealt with. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now, this one relates to single mothers. If a single mother has a young child and they need to work outside of the home to provide for the family, is it appropriate for her to put the child in daycare if she doesn't have anybody to watch them? And secondly, she wants to know, well, let's just deal with that. Let's just deal with that main part. Okay, well, that's simple. Uh, I mean, it's not simple to do, but it's a simple answer. You mm -hmm. just got to do what you have to do. Sometimes circumstances in life don't go your way and you have to do less than ideal things. Yeah. It would be ideal for the woman to be home taking care of her children. Mm -hmm. uh, that's biblical. Mm -hmm. It would be ideal for you to be able to, you know, uh, uh, be a stay at home mom in a situation where you're married. Those are, those are situations that are ideal. Uh, but sometimes you're in a less, less than ideal situation where a man is not there. You got to provide whatever. So you got to do what you have to do. Yeah. But your prayer should always be to find a job or source of income that will allow you to be with your children as much as possible so that you don't have to trust others with the developmental safety of your children. That should be your prayer. It should always be your prayer. And sometimes you got to scale things down. And that's what people don't like to do. Right. You got to scale things down to be there for the kids. It's worth it. It's mm -hmm. worth the sacrifice. You got to mm -hmm. pull back sometimes. You got to drive that car later. You can't have two cars. You know, you just sometimes even in a marriage, you have to scale back for the sake of the children to make sure they're safe and you're fulfilling your responsibility as a parent. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh, worketh in us. That means that you, you, you're sitting up thinking of the things you could do or how this situation could probably play out. God can do exceedingly abundantly above that if you trust him. So that's what I'm saying. You pray and you trust God because God wants to protect your children. And so he'll, he, he can make a way for that. That's good. Uh, oh. Go ahead. I, to, to try to address the, the second half, but in a more general sense. Okay. So, the, the, a, a lot of people who have been in support of EX Ministries over the years, um, whether they have home churches and or they, because um, we know people even across, overseas that consider Pastor G their pastor. And so, they're faithfully tuning in for their, their spiritual nourishment, right? Mm -hmm. But there, there's still a maybe a misunderstanding of some sort of why pastor would teach something a certain way or give correction to the way uh, uh, scripture has been interpreted, even if it's vastly done by um, ministers or preachers or pastors or, you know, the people that people tune into. I, I can see why a person would ask the question. It seems like if I listen to this preacher, because we address this in the right church, mm -hmm. it seems like if I, I listen to Pastor G, then it's this and, and, I, and it feels right. I apply it and it's right. But then I hear it over here. Then I hear it over here. And none of these things are lining up, but we're all supposed to be the same church. I think a lot of people will, will want clarity if there's something to be clarified. Why is that? Why does it seem like if we're all one church that it, it, a couple of things, if not the main things, are sometimes taught differently? Mm -hmm. Well, what it, let me bring them up to speed on what you're talking about. The mm -hmm. second part of the question was, uh, why is it that churches are not on one accord in their teaching? So that's the answer that he's referring to. Well, and, but that goes back to what I said earlier about perilous times. The Bible said this would happen. It said because of because men would become lovers of themselves, mm -hmm. heady, high minded, boasters, different right. things. They won't be able to. I mean, a boaster and a heady and a high minded person can't be in fellowship with anyone. I mean, and the fellowship isn't going to be real unless it can benefit him in some kind of way. If he's a boaster. So 
that's that's the explanation right there in a nutshell. It's just the time that we're in. It's hard to find a pure stream of sound doctrine because there are so many selfish motives involved now. Yeah. So the next question is talking about head covering. And I know we talked about this a lot as I was growing up in church, but they want to know what is our take on head covering while praying or prophesying. And they're looking at 1 Corinthians 11, 2 through 6. Okay, so so head covering in this particular passage, it, it it's not pertaining to the natural sense. Right. Um, it's spiritual. Paul was speaking of a woman being covered or protected by the spiritual authority authority of a man, which either be, be it her father or her husband. That's what Paul was talking about. So her emotional nature, so so that her emotional nature is not compromised by spirit being. Okay, so first Corinthians eleven and six. For if, the woman, for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn, right? But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Mm -hmm. And I thought there was no male or female in Christ. Yeah. <laughs> See, I mean, everything just have to match if you're going to be preaching. Paul even uses a woman's hair uh, uh, as symbolism for this. I can go in, I went into detail of this on my Era Man 3 video as well, but yeah. women are vulnerable to spiritual influences. This is the main reason they are not called to pastor or lead men spiritually. The Bible says Adam was not deceived, but the woman, she was deceived by a spiritual being. Paul set the order based on the female disposition. First Timothy 2 and 14, Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Okay, so this is another one. You're going to have to follow me, saints. <laughs> and it's paraphrasing, but it says, when you say some churches teach that not giving can bring a curse to you, and you say it not true. Then later you said God does bless a person that gives, and the ones that have and don't will have a devourer in their home. Isn't that a curse if it's not a blessing? So this is in reference to Malachi. Well, what Malachi was referring to, he, he was speaking of the curse that came on the priest okay. um, when he held back what was meant for the temple. Mm -hmm. Right. Two totally different scenarios. Because it was required. This this particular thing was required of the priest to do. Right. But the New Testament church was taught to give freely, freely. It's my time to give. Uh, freely, it's a song we sing here. All right, cool. Uh, but not because it, not because we had to, <laughs> or out of necessity. <laughs> so there can be no curse if it's free will, okay. right? Second uh, Corinthians nine and seven. Every man according uh, as he purpose in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves who cheerful giver. Give. And if you give, you're gonna be blessed. But just because things are better does not mean that not better is cursed, right? Mm -hmm. Or that you are cursed because you do not receive more. That don't mean you're cursed. Right. That's just where you are. So we can't consider the lack of a blessing a curse. That's what this person in this question is trying to do. Because mm -hmm. I lack the blessing, I must be cursed. No, if you give, you'll get the blessing. If you don't give, you won't get the blessing. But that don't mean you're cursed. Right. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. It does. Okay. Very much. So I believe we're down to our final question. And Jay, I can ask you this question. I think we're very blessed to be a part of ABC. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. You want my testimony? No, we don't We'll have save time. that for next season. <laughs> but this last question that came to us, they wanted to talk about that. And they said that finding a church like ABC is nearly impossible. Their question is, what is the formula that makes this church so awesome? I wanted you to answer. Well, that I feel like the church is awesome as well. The church mm -hmm. isn't my doing, it's God's doing. Amen. So I commend God for making it awesome. I'm doing a series right now, uh, Lessons at 50. Mm -hmm. And during that, I'm talking about some principles that I implemented on my journey in Christendom mm -hmm. uh, for the last 30 years that, that could help other people. And some of those are actually in here. So I'm going to close with this, but I'm going to explain kind of uh, ABC, because I think there are some things here that maybe could help some other ministries as they are formulating. Um, first off, ABC is organically grown. Mm -hmm. That's the great part about it. We are a fairly new church, but I feel one of the most important components of it is that we are all here for the same reasons. People sacrificed income, statuses, opportunities, 
and in many cases, fame to come and give their family something that they may have missed. Yeah. No other agendas are presently op uh, operating at ABC other than the word of God being taught uncompromisingly and fellowship being created with all people feeling equal. OK, and I don't separate myself as a pastor from the body, but I'm among the congregation as one that needs what is being taught just as much as those that are following the message. I'm not tied to any other organization where I must conform to their expectation standards or morality or hierarchy of elevation. I can't use the church or the people to become anything in the eyes of men, but rather I serve God's people and forsake the titles and statuses. OK, mm -hmm. so that's something that I've implemented. We are a preventive church. This is the most important part. I agree. We focus on family and children and keeping our values intact. So we're not I'm preaching about the stuff that's making problems so that we don't keep creating problems and have to come here and try to pray them away. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, so we don't look at success in the natural, but we believe spiritual success will lead to better marriages, better treatment of others and living better lifestyles that can change children's uh, futures. Uh, we believe fruits of the we believe the fruits of the spirit is the manifestation of the spirit. So the evidence of the Holy Ghost being in you is not speaking in tongues to us. Right. It's your behavior. Yeah. And how you love one another. Amen. Because the Bible tells us you will know them by their what? Tongues? No. Nope. You will know them by their fruit. How our marriages look, how our homes are established, the order of God, the precepts of God, and the love of God are all the proof we need for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost here at ABC. So I believe ABC is special, and so are many other churches out there Amen. are special that are implementing this thing. You have to pray to find that place. You have to pray for God to lead you to that place. But if we are all on one accord, as far as how we uh, deem the importance of doing things God's way is, then you can be blessed at, uh, at those churches. Amen. Right. So we want to thank you again for tuning in to AB. I mean, to what is this? <laughs> the X Ministries. The X Ministries. The okay. All of that. <laughs> okay. Cool. Tuning in to the exposition for uh, our second season, and uh, we'll see you season three. Okay, this right here is Jerry's. It's Jerry's. He's camera, left camera. What's your camera? Left camera. We don't have we don't have enough to number. This right here is Kevin. He's our token. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Best guy. laughs> He operates the gym. So the gym. That's that thing. The gym shot camera. This is Tasha Sanders. I actually married her. And she operates center camera. Yeah. So kind of. Kind of. That, that camera. This is Billy. He does the engineering from the back room, switching. Control or whatever. These are the switches. See? Switches. My son, Landon, producer. He's gorgeous. Look like his daddy. This right here. This is Robert, audio engineer. This man is so smart. His brain just is it's huge. This is Eddie. He's over our AV here at ABC. He's just here to make sure they don't break nothing. It's our administrator of uh, ABC right here, Julian Fowler. He kind of handles, he does the dirty work. Yeah. And he is black, he's not Arab. Oh. Uh, who else we got? Security. Oh, that's security. John. That's John. Here's our security guy right here. So if you mess with me, John is going to get you. I don't even think you're supposed to be showing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll blur that out. All right. <laughs> Well, is that it? Is that everybody? Okay. Well, we just thank you for another season. Oh, show yourself. The other Aaron, he just kind of does, the guy filming, he just kind of does a little bit of everything. There you go, Jay Brian. Show it. Now, he, he's not that old. He's had those grades since he was like 20, because I was there. All right, but we want to thank you again. Oh, my, my, my wife. Come here, baby. That's my wife right there. She's in charge of everything. No, I'm just kidding. But I um, want to definitely thank y'all for tuning in. We'll be back with season three. It's going to be very good.
Jonathan. Our marker for the exposition is my son, too. Say hi. Hey. Okay. <laughs>